Bhukti-vedanta-saimara-shita-prabhupada-ki <laughs> Vrindavan Dham ki, Matura Dham ki, Dwarka Dham ki, Navadu Dham ki, Jaganapur Dham ki, Chamuna Maya ki, Ganga Maya ki, Tulsi Maharani ki, Bhakti Devi ki, Sambhira Bhakti Vindu ki, Shishi Rukmini Dorkadish ki, Sisi Gornatai ki, Shi Jaganam Balade Subhadra ki, Gopremanandi, all glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to divine let us see to C C Guru and Goranga. Hey, you have to help me out a bit. In all honesty, I've been traveling for twenty four hours plus and a little I just have a simple question. What day is today? I really, I don't know. Is it Monday or Tuesday? It's Tuesday. All right. And we're in Los Angeles. I know that because of beautiful Rukmini Dorkadish. Okay. Thank you. 28. Is it what? 28. All right. No, date helps too. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Krishna Sadamo Bhagate Damaganari Visaha Kalana Sadisham Mesha Parana Kona Nadaina namaskrichan ramchayvam narottama Devim sarasatim vyasam tato jayam utirayat Nasta prayeshu abhadeshu nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavate utama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki So Archita Prabhu very kindly sent me a, um, the verse. So by my calculation, 
you can, if I'm wrong, you can blame it on Archita. We're on the third canto, chapter th 13, text 28. Yeah? yeah? We have harmony in the universe? Very good. I just wanted to mention that uh, I saw some presentation somewhere, somewhere down the road, it, well, I was in India. And it mentioned that Archita has been serving steadily in the BBT since when was that? Well, what year did you start? It was, be, it, be, it, this, it was a picture of the, uh, maybe it was of the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita Marathon. And there was a picture of Archid there. So, so what year was that? That's what I wanted to know. So 73 means fa enough, enough. I'm giving class, not you. Sorry. 73. So that's 50 years at the BBT. Steady at the same service. That's no small accomplishment. Of course, we have Swavas Prabhu, who's been the temple president in LA for how long? 30, who's counting? 37 years. And is the director of the North American BBT. And it should be noted that the North American BBT is the largest donor to the Temple of Vedic Planetarium of all the other BBT divisions. So that's no small accomplishment. Steady. Prabhupada said, I'll tell you a quick story. We'll get to the body of class. But, um, and I, there was a devotee. I won't, don't want to mention his name. Well, I can't. He's a nice devotee. Preman, Premarjana was his name? Yeah, I think. Premarnava. Premarnava was his name. He was in a black body. He was a fantastic kirtan leader. And Prabhupada heard him lead kirtan in Detroit. And Detroit has a large black population. Prabhupada told him to stay there in Detroit. Prabhupada wanted him to get a flat bag truck, put a nice pondal on, on top of it, travel around with speakers throughout Detroit, lead kirtan, stop at different places, distribute prasadam, then travel like that. They probably wanted him to do that in Detroit. He didn't want to do that. So, Prabhupada told him, you stay in Detroit. He said, yes, yes, yes. But then he continued to follow Prabhupada as Prabhupada was traveling down the co east coast of the United States. And he would slip in, you know, it was a big crowd, he'd stand in the back, this and that. And he'd managed to travel all the way from Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., and all the way down the coast, Philadelphia, <laughs> without Prabhupada spotting him. Prabhupada called him in his, no, so everywhere Prabhupada went, Shruti Kirti noted, that they just painted the place. They wanted it nice for Prabhupada, so they just painted everything. So wherever Prabhupada went, the room smelled of fresh paint. And, you know, fresh paint can give you a headache. You smell that all the time, you know. Shruti Kirti said Prabhupada would walk into a room, you know, traveling to a new temple, look at Shruti Kirti and say, fresh paint, you know. So they painted the, this is in Washington, D.C., they painted Prabhupada's quarters, and they painted the window shut. You know, if you paint it, you know, it'll jam. You know, if you don't, you have to break that. So Brahmananda was trying to open the window. Prabhupada was, they thought Prabhupada was in the other room. So Brahmananda was trying to open the window and he couldn't get it open, which is something to say. So they, he looked outside, he saw Premarnava. Premarnava was big and strong. He said, come on in, try to open this window. So they were, boom, they finally got the window open. Just as they got the window open, Prabhupada walked in and sat down. And that was a medium-sized room. Prabhupada sitting here is Premarnav, who's been managed for the last two weeks to hide himself from Prabhupada, but be traveling with Prabhupada. So he thought, and the room started to fill up with devotees. He thought, well, I'll just, he plastered himself against the wall and walked along the wall backwards. Just if he could make it to the door without turning his face, you probably wouldn't see him. And just as he got to the door, Prabhupada said, ah, Premarnava, why are you here? Prabhupada said, here's the point I wanted to make. Prabhupada said, I am looking for a man who will stay in one place, sit down tight, and develop it. 
So sure, there's devotee, and, and we're all for retreats. We're all for so many different things. I ask the devotee, I always see him at different retreats, this retreat, that retreat. He's always going to a retreat. I said, you keep retreating. When are you going to advance? Uh, and I don't mean to minimize retreats at all, but you know, to stay in one place or stay with one service, many people are, are at play at the hand of God. Fine, that's great. You know, somehow or other, be attached, be under the shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Fine, great, no problem. But there needs to be a few great souls. Every building, you have walls, you have bricks, you have windows, but there's got to be some columns that hold the thing up. So I just wanted to offer him respects to Archita Prabhu and uh, Swavas Prabhu. And of course, we've got Sachidanoi, who's been distributing books for so many years. We've got Brigu Prabhu. These are the, uh, we've got Balaram, if he's here, you know, has so many years serving Rukmini Dwarkadish. That's a real badge of honor. And that's how these things, that's how Prabhupada's movement goes on. That's how Mahaprabhu's movement goes on. So I just wanted, of course, Tadit Mataji is a, a great hero. Not just because she stayed married to Swavas. No, I'm joking. Swavas is a good husband. You know, but the, that gift shop just pumps out goodwill and Lakshmi. So it's, and it's no small task. I tried to get a few things back. Govardhan, who was traveling with me, can tell you, I tried to get, get a few things back for Radhagiridhari and Sandy, some incense, some oil, some, you know, some nice necklaces from, you know, real stone from Jayapur. It was a hassle and a half just to get a few items. And I was thinking of Tadid, how does she do it? I said, you know, jeez. Yeah, now you go with her, and you know. But I, I don't know how she. I don't know how it's possible. So just you can meditate on this to be steady in devotional service and find a service you like and stay with it, and Krishna will help you. And it's what this movement rests on. Okay. Sure. Are you training up an assistant, Archita? That's good. Yeah, so she sent me a, a, a message several days back, and it's by Srila Prabhupada. It's a quote. My idea is that the leaders must agree to stick at one place. Even they may <clears throat> have to remain there lifelong. That is the ideal leader, one who is conscious of his duty. Jeez. Well, that's serendipity. Thank you very much. Okay, so what's... Now class goes and don't say, oh Maharaj, as long as you like. When does class usually go to? 8.30? Something like that. Okay, we'll be. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. But when it gets close to breakfast, people's mood tends to change. Okay, so let's do the Sanskrit. When I travel, anyway, so many things, I can barely see. Granena Pritvya Paravim Vij Vijigran Krodapadesha Svayam Advaranga Karala Dum Shita Damshito No Damshro Api Akarala Jigbyam Udviksha Vipram Granato Vishat Ham Granena Prithya Paravim Vijigran Krota Padesha Svayam Advaranga Karala Dumstropi Akarala Drigbyam Udviksha vipran granato vishat 
Hum kum. Granena pritya paravim vijigran. Krodapadesha svayam advarangaha. Karala dumstropi a karala digbam. Udviksha vipram granato vishatkam. Granena pritya paravim vijigran. Krodapadesha svayam advarangaha. Karala dumstropi a karala digbam. Advikshya vipram granato vishatkam. Granena pritva paravim. Granena by smelling Pritvya of the earth Paravim situation Vijigran searching after the earth Krota Abadesha assuming the body of a hog Svayam personally Advara Transcendental, Anga, body, Karala, fearful, Dhamstra, teeth, tusks, Api, in spite of, Akarala, not fearful, Drigbyam, by his glance, Udviksha, glancing over, Vipram, all the Brahmana devotees. Grinata, who were engaged in prayers. Avishat, entered. Come, the water. 
He was personally the Supreme Lord Vishnu and was therefore transcendental. Yet because he had the body of a hog, he searched after the earth by smell. His tusks were fearful and he glanced over the devotee brahmanas engaged in offering prayers. Thus, he entered into the water. Also you say, he was personally the Supreme Lord Vishnu and was therefore transcendental. Yet because he had the body of a hog, he searched after the earth by smell. His tusks were fearful and he glanced over the devotee Brahmins, engaged in offering prayers. Thus he entered into the water. Purport. We should always remember that although the, although the body of a hog is material, the hog form of the Lord was not materially contaminated. It is not possible for an earthly hog to assume a gigantic form spreading throughout the sky beginning from the Satya Loka. His body is always transcendental in all circumstances. Therefore, the assumption of the form of a boar is only his pastime. His body is all Veda or transcendental. But since he has assumed the form of a boar, he began to search out the earth by smelling just like a hog. The Lord can perfectly play the part of any living entity. The gigantic feature of the boar was certainly very fearful for all the, for all the non-devotees, but to the pure devotees of the Lord, he was not at all fearful. On the contrary, he was so pleasingly glancing upon his devotees that all of them felt transcendental happiness. Om agena tamarandasya agena agena salakaya jakshu shrimilatangena tasmade shi gurave namaha I was just happened to be listening to a tape the other day and Prabhupada was talking about Lord Boar. And he says, you have to imagine how large, how huge the form of the boar was. It was carrying the earth planet on his tusks. So just extrapolate how, and here Prabhupada says from Satya Loka. So thing is, what is the use of a concept of God but he can't do this, he can't do that, he can't have a form, he can't dance with 16,108 gopis. Prabhupada said he's in the heart of every living entity and he can't come out. You know, he's already dancing in the heart of unlimited living entities. What is to expand into 16,108? So, Sridhar Swami says at the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Without accepting the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Lord, there is no way to understand the absolute truth. It should be. Ab Krishna likes to sport. He likes to play. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the, oh, he can't do this, he can't do that. No. Then you have completely misunderstood the nature of the absolute. Krishna can be smaller than the smaller greater than the greatest. We know all of this. He walks and he doesn't walk. He's near and he's very far away from the Shupanishad. This is the understanding of the absolute truth. So, I was in a, actually with Prabhupada on a morning walk with a number of devotees in Detroit. There's a place called Belle Isle. It's in the middle of the Detroit River which caught on fire and burned for three days. It's so contaminated. But in the middle of the Detroit River, there's an island. It used to be the DuPont's mansion, and they turned it over to the city. But there's a, stat there's a number of statues. So there's one big statue of Atlas, the Roman or Greek god holding up the world. You ever seen that? You know, he's, like, oh, he's like Schwarzenegger, and he's, like, oh, he's really pushing it out with the big muscles and all the different things. So Prabhupada stopped walked over off the path to look at him. Prabhupada said, what is this? The devotees explained, this is Atlas and he's holding up the earth in, in Roman and Greek mythology. Prabhupada said, we are not interested in such a God. Krishna doesn't have to lift weights to become God. At, what is it, six or seven years old, there's different versions, six or seven years old, Krishna lifts Govardhan Hill. And just to make it even more sublime, what hand does he use? 
Yeah, which is generally a weaker hand. And what finger of his left hand does he? He uses his little finger. So it just, as Prabhupada says, his pastime umbrella, he lifts up Govardhan Hill. So this is God. Not that he's got to sweat and worry about it or, you know. It's if, well, I'm thinking of the time factor, so we'll push on. Um, there's the impersonal idea. There's different conceptions of the absolute truth. And there's the impersonal idea. Because mostly people are, every form is limited. Every form is frustrating. Personhood has been a real burden to them. You know, being a person, people break your heart. People cheat on you. People have been so many disappointments. And then you watch your body fall apart. It's tough being an individual. And if you, if you ever want to attract an audience, speaking on a college campus, speaking at, you know, wherever it is, put the word stress relief, but you'll get a crowd. Why? What does that mean? What is that indication? Everybody's suffering from stress. Everybody wants relief. So their idea is just, I don't want to be a person. I don't want to deal with any kind of relation. I just want to find my home and home. I want to merge. But as we all know, it's not really satisfying. Prabhupada jokes, we want a per we actually want a negation of a negative, Prabhupada says, is not negation of a positive. Because of all our negative personal relationships doesn't mean that there's not the possibility of a, po of a, of a positive relationship. Negation of a negative, let me get rid of these negative relationships, doesn't mean no relationship. If you look at a number line, you know a number line? There's zero, there's all the negative numbers. So is to come to the zero the answer? What's, is that it on a number line? What's on the other side of a number line? There's all the positive numbers. They, they have in India, only in India. India. If you don't have a sense of humor, India will snap you in half. If you have a sense of humor, it's kind of an adventure. They have in a lot of buildings, and Govardhan confirmed, they have zero floor. Instead of ground floor, it says zero floor. Only in India. How can you have zero? You, the zero floor that means, I mean, it's, it, nothing's there. And you, when the door opens, all of a sudden everything merges. No, there's all kinds of variegation. So Prabhupada jokes that, you know, the universal form, Prabhupada says, where will you hang the garland? You know, where, where's the relationship? Where's the interaction? No. So the impersonal idea doesn't work. Next thing they come up with, as we all, because we're talking about forms of God here, the next thing we come up with is they have God as an old man. Prabhupada says, I had a father, my father had a father, my father's father had a father. So you go back to the first father, he must be the oldest, right? And oldest means he's old with the beard, he's wrinkled. There's the famous Michelangelo, I think it's Michelangelo, and God is touching, creating man, and they're touching finger to finger. You know that picture. That's the image people have of God. In the West, they have of God. Of course, they either they have an impersonal idea, or if they're a little, you know, more pious, they have an idea of a personal God. But suppose I have, who's the youngest here? Well, let's take, huh? Okay, but he's not, well, let's try it. Suppose I had mystic power. And I, all of a sudden, zap! I could turn you into an 80-year-old man. Would you take it? Eight zero, but my friend. Would you take it? No. Jamuna Jivana. Zap! 80 years old. Would you take it? Nobody, they weren't looking for the fountain of old age. They were looking for the fountain of youth. So how is it that, this, that, that God is an old man with a beard and not in a very good mood, actually? He's always throwing thunderbolts and smiting and smoting people, you know? How does that make any sense? Let me ask you this. If God is the source of all life, how can God be an old man? Bhagavatam gives the perfect, uh, the Brahma Samhita says, what is it, the Govinda Madhi Purusham in Brahma Samhita? It says, Purana Purusham. He's the oldest person. 
But what's the very next line? Nava Yovanam Cha. That is also simultaneously a fresh youth. If you accept the infinite potency of the Absolute, as Sridhar Maharaj says, Sridhar Swami says, the original commentary on the Bhagavatam, then he's simultaneously the oldest of the oldest and he's a fresh youth. Devotees ask Prabhupada, the description of the Kingdom of God, that section of the Bhagavatam had just come out, and it describes how Krishna is the source of all life, and therefore even the garlands on Krishna's body don't wilt. So devotees are always cranking their mind around to come up with the stump the Swami question. That you get them all the time. So similarly when Prabhupada was there, a devotee asked Prabhupada, well, if Krishna is the source of all life, and it's confirmed in the Bhagavatam because he's the source of all life, the garlands don't wilt, and if the deity, beautiful Rukmini Dwarkadish, are standing right there, then the deity is the same as Krishna, then why do the garlands wilt on the deity? Hmm? It's a stump the Swami question. Does it mean that the Bhagavatam's not right and the garlands actually do wilt? Does it mean that the deity's not actually Krishna but stone? What is the answer? Prabhupada said, just to give you some service. If the garland wills, you have to make another one, you know. So, God is not an old man in a bad mood and there's always, if you ever go to Lincoln, anyone here ever been to the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C.? It's quite an, it's, and it's meant to be quite a, a solemn, people, they're all chittering and chattering at different high school students or, you know, college, whatever they are, different, high schools or whatever. You know, they all go on a tour if you're on the East Coast. You go to Washington, D.C. once in a year, or, you know, once in your school life. And they're all chittering and chattering and this and that. And when they get to the top of the stairs and they walk, it's imposing. You just, they just naturally, they get quiet. So it's a very imposing awe and reverence. We feel, as they say, the writers of the early Protestants, we feel our sense of creatureliness that we're very small and God is very big, you know. So, but that's not really very satisfying. So the Vaishnavas, they have the idea of interaction with God. We have all the different rasas. We have so many different Krishnas sporting and playing and with his devotees. You only find this in Vaishnavism. And in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, you find a special flavor of that at play with God. Krishna has, what is it, the living entity has 58 qualities up to Lord Brahma. Then uh, Shiva has a certain set, I forget what his number is. Then Vishnu has up to 60. And only Krishna has four qualities. And one of those qualities is wonderful pastimes, especially what type, what age pastimes? Childhood pastimes. You'll never see a picture of baby Vishnu. You never see it. It's always a flavor of awe and reverence is in there. There's always a sense that he's the superior. I mean, there's intimate loving pastimes. But only in Krishna, only in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, do we find this idea that you can actually ride on the shoulders of Krishna. You can defeat him in wrestling and he has to carry you on his shoulders. That's an unbelievable sweet concept. He can be the Lord Boar. Krishna likes to play. He's not dry. He does all kinds of amazing things. He's active. So, and there was a poster that when the, in the old temple on La Sienega, there was a poster of Radha and Krishna and the gopis. And Prabhupada described the poster. I've been trying to get a copy of it. I can't find it. Um, it's, it's Radharani is sitting on a throne surrounded by her gopis, Vishaka and Lalita primarily. And she won't even give Krishna the time of the day. She's looking. And Krishna's at her feet. And he's taking his crown, he's taking his flute, he's taking his prized possessions, and he's put them at Radharani's feet. He's 
done something. It's her anger, Leela, who he's, you know, done something and not given her special attention. So Prabhupada, and you have Cupid in the bushes, you know, the traditional Cupid, and he snapped his bow and thrown it aside and he's putting his head like, like he can't understand what's happening. So Prabhupada described that what's actually happening in that poster is Radharani is looking at Lalita. Krishna's surrendered everything, everything he's got, and he's asking for her mercy, forgiveness, and to let her again, you know, engage in pastimes. She's looking at Lalita, and she's saying, should I forgive him now, or should I hold out a little bit longer? And Cupid, trying to understand the Madhurya Ras of Radha and Krishna, is just completely defeated, cannot even comprehend it. So this is Krishna likes to play, Krishna likes to sport and interact with his devotees. And here's one of the manifestations, Lord Bohr. Now, looking at the time factor, because I might watch upside down. Oh, geez, there we are. Um, The fearful tusks, Lord Bohr was in a very fearful form. But he glanced over his devotees and the devotees feel reassured. Can you think of another pastime that strikes terror into the materialist's heart? Uh, anyone else other than our senior, anyone you want to guess? What is a, the two polar positions are there? great terror in the, in the hearts of the demons and asuras, but gives the devotees the greatest satisfaction. What is that form? Nishring, Lord Nishringa. He's When Lord Nishringa appeared, he was roaring from his, his appearance the, the, uh, in the subterranean heavenly planets, the wives had miscarriages. So frightening. <laughs> Indra Dumna Maharaj used to travel with the deity of Lord Nishringadev in his carry-on. And when they would run it through the scanners, you know, through the, you know, they, oh, what's that, you know? He said this was always the reaction. He'd zip it open, he'd uncover the case, whoa! The TSA, but whoa! They'd always, whoa, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, you know? So Lord Nishringadev has this, but for the devotees, here we have little Prahlad offering a garland. So, I guess I'll jump to the point I wanted to make. And that's that, that every time Krishna appears, he has a plan. It's not whimsical. You know, he comes as Lord Buddha so to, to reestablish uh, the principles of Dharma, at least that he should not stop killing animals, ahimsa. Although the Dalai Lama is not a vegetarian, and I can tell you how that's confirmed. No, he is not a vegetarian. He eats beef. Well, we're off the track. Anutama was at a... Um, and help me get back to Krishna has a plan. Uh, Anutama was at an interfaith. He, go, he goes to all these things, these interfaith, you know, and it's good. And it builds nice relationships. This was a big one. And he was the chairman who organized the thing. And it was in Washington, D.C., and he was seated next to the Dalai Lama. And the Anutam has got, it's a dinner, you have to sit there. I've learned how to play with a salad for about 45 minutes at these things, you know. So it's a vegetarian thing. He ordered a vegetarian plate. And he noticed that the Dalai Lama was eating beef. Beef strips or beef and noodles, beef something. So he couldn't resist. He said, you know, I thought one of the basic premises of Buddhism was nonviolence and being a vegetarian. So I'm just curious, what's up with that? The Dalai Lama said that to discriminate, to state a preference is a form of ego. And I simply accept whatever's put in my begging bowl. If they put vegetarian in my begging bowl, I eat it. If they put non-veg in my begging bowl, I eat it. So, and, and to say, I want this, I want that, I prefer that, that is a manifestation of ego. 
That's an interesting answer. Anutama pointed out, because his team sent out the invitations, he said, but there was a box on the invitation. When you RSVP, you say you're going to come. They also want to know how many dinners to cook for who and what. There was a veg box and a non-veg box. You must have checked the non-veg box. You know what he said? Oh, Swami, I have to finish my tea. And he turned his back. In other words, he was completely defeated and he didn't have an answer. You know? But the point we wanted to make, so it's confirmed, another rascal. No shortage. The Krishna has a plan. And every incarnation comes with a purpose. Now, the most recent avatar, the Yuga avatar, of course, actually avatar and avatari, he's actually Krishna himself, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he came with a plan. And that plan was to spend the Sankatan movement all over the world. Just like Krishna says at the end of Bhagavad Gita. He says, you can fight or not fight. You have a choice. We all have free will. But these people are not going home. I'm putting you, Steer Maharaj, on the throne because that will be good for the world to reestablish Dharma. You know, he comes to establish Dharma. So I'm putting you, you just are a Marsha. You can participate or not participate. You participate, you'll get the glory. So we should be fully convinced that there is a plan of Krishna for this world. And in his own way, it the principles of dharma are being real established. It, it's, it's, Prabhupada explained, I heard him explain it. It's also in that interview with the Beach Boys, which came out in the Back to Godhead magazine in the seven, 1970, that we know Kali Yuga started 5,000 years ago, and it goes for 420,000 years. And it just gets progressively worse. It gets to the point that the fruit is only a nut and a seed, skin, sorry, skin and seed, that there's no milk, there's no sugar, there's no wheat. It gets to the point people eat each other just for a living, you know. Unbelievable. If somebody lives to 35 years, they're a grand old man. It's already happening. I was just thinking about, oh, anyway, I don't want to get off too far afield. But where was I going with that? So that's where Kali Yuga is going. That's the general flow of things. But Prabhupada said that from the birth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's a cross current, there's an eddy, there's, there's a, like in a river, you'll see it flowing this way, and sometimes there'll be a little cross current going the opposite way by the shore. It'll go the, you know. So there's a cross current in Kali Yuga. It started from the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhupada says it goes up for 5,000 years and it plateaus for 5,000 years. It's a total of 10,000 year cross current where the Vaishnava principles, some people, it separates, like, you know, you curds and whey, it separates. And the people will become, some small section will become more and more pious, more and more devotional. There'll be pockets of pure Krishna consciousness. And the general stream will go the other way. Then Prabhupada said, after, 5, 000, after that 10,000 years, 5,000 years, 5,000 plateau, Prabhupada said, um, then all the devotees go back to Godhead and Kali Yuga sets in full bore. The devotees ask Prabhupada, that what if we don't go back to Godhead? Prabhupada says, oh, then you can see the fun. You know, it's just, but the devotees go back to Godhead. So there is a plan put in place by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Yuga avatar, Krishna coming in this age. Because every Yuga, every avatar, there's a purpose, there's a plan. We live in, if there's design, it's the either or question. We're going to go a little over, but it's all right. It's the either or question. Either things are happening by chance or they're happening by design. It's either one or the other. You can't have them, you can't be both. It's either happening by chance or it's happening by design. We can make a profound case for this world being finely tuned, existence. I mean, the sun moves as an inch uh, and everything's burnt to hell. The, 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 the water off the coast of um, 
Peru changes by one percentage of a degree, and the whole food chains all the way up the coast, all the way to Alaska, completely change. We have a, a he will get a Nobel Peace Prize. He's one of the cutting edge climatologists. He's at UC San Diego, Scripps Institute. He's an, he specializes in oceanography and climate change. Ram Ramanath is his name. He's a nice guy. He was saying that they're just beginning to understand all the currents in the water. And he said, even beyond that, the, just as we, we have some concept of tides and currents and ebbs and flows and everything happening in the ocean, same thing's happening in the air. He said, it's just like the, the, the earth, he told me, the earth is just like a body with all these different circulatory systems and lymph system and nervous system. There's, elect, there's all kinds of systems. He said, we're just, we don't even have a clue how complex and interdependent it all is. And that's all happening by chance. So if it's hap if it's not happening by chance, it's happening by design. And if there's design, design means purpose. There's a purpose for things. Krishna has designed the world for a particular purpose. So just to get jump back to the point I was trying to make, that there's a plan. And it begins with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's meant to establish Prabhupada's golden age within the age of Kali. What is a simple proof of that plan? I'll give you a simple proof of this plan. When I used to go, well, Prabhupada came to America, an old man, not in good health. No money, no friends, no contacts. He had, what is it, 80 rupees, which you couldn't even convert. They wouldn't even look at 80 rupees in any kind of American bank. He had $20 from the set of books, which is indicative, it all comes from book distribution, $20 from a set of books he stole to Captain Pandya on, on the uh, Jaladuta. Nothing. He had a bag of coins also, so he could put them in the automat and get, his way, get himself to Butler, Pennsylvania, home of the Jeep. That's Butler, Pennsylvania. That's what they're famous for. And yet, he, and he sat down and we all know the story. And from that came so many temples, so many devotees, so many books, so many festivals. It's completely impossible. It's against all odds. He arrived in America. Dogs run free, so why can't we? John Lennon standing naked on the cover of a record album. That was the culture. And Prophet says, shave up, shape up, you know, to stop doing this. When I first came to the old La Cienica temple, I heard Prabhupada give class. I arrived late and I thought he said, we have so many donuts, donuts, donuts. I thought, fantastic. I love sweets. I'm in the right place. But then as I listened, he said, do nots, yama and niyama, Prabhupada said. Every process has do's and do nots. So, you know, dogs run free, so why can't we? And Prabhupada comes in with all these rules and regulations. Shave up? How is it possible? I mean, there's no logical reason, no sociological trend. And yet it happened. And it's still happening. So we should have confidence that we, so on a, on a, a macro scale, we should have confidence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's plan. And that we get to participate in it is a most wonderful thing. Individually, we should have confidence that Krishna has a plan for us. As he has a plan for the world in general, he has a plan for each and every one of us. The devotees are under Krishna's direct protection. For the materialist, the material nature is taking care of them. Krishna's super soul knows their desires and they're okay, fine. He's involved in that way. He sanctions according to our desires. But it's carried out by the material nature. And Krishna is more or less indifferent. It. Like a chickpea. You know, if you want to cook with a chickpea, what do you have to do first? You have to soak it till it's soft. So the material nature is just letting people soak. You know, they're just soaking in the three modes of material nature. And finally, everybody, this is not working. There's got to be something else. And when become, consciousness becomes willing to become soft like that, then Krishna gives direction, direct direction. 
but we should know that we are under Krishna's direct energy. So what is the, what is the counter question that arises? Then why do difficult things happen to devotees? Why isn't everything smooth sailing? I'm trying to serve Krishna, and he's put this obstacle in my service, and this obstacle, this happens to my body. So many of my fans, what is this? It's proof there's no God that there's difficulty in this world. Why is he not taking care of his devotees? Krishna, have you abandoned me? Jonah in the whale. What's the answer? Have I left you all? I will, bye, jai. That's the end of class, see you later. What's the answer? The answer is that we have to understand the plan of this world, the design of this world. It is not designed to make us comfortable. It's designed to bring us to the point of surrender to Krishna. Michelangelo, the famous sculptor, would look at a big block of marble. And he, his statues, you know, I mean, you know, it's mundane art and who cares and all of that. But, you know, La Pieta, the Mother Mar Virgin Mary is holding Christ's dead body or David. And, you know, they're just unbelievable. They, they are lifelike. You're waiting for the thing to speak to you. So usually a, a sculptor will carve. They, they, they sketch from each angle on the four sides of the big block. They, they sketch out what they want the thing to look like. And then, they sit and then they go at it. But Michelangelo didn't do that. He just looked at the block and looked at the block and looked at it. One of his friends asked, when are you going to sketch on it? He said, I don't need a sketch on it. I can see it in there. I can see it. That was his vision. He could actually see the thing. He said, I just have to remove all the extra stuff. And that's how he went at it. He could see the thing and he just chipped off until he got what he wanted. You know, he could see it in there. So Krishna's in the heart of every living entity. He can see where we're at. He knows what we need. He knows what's good for us. He has a plan for us. And the best thing is we go back to Godhead. That's, I mean, I can give a whole explanation of that, but we don't have time. Krishna has our best interest at heart. Like kids, they want so many dangerous, foolish, crazy things. The parents say, nah, I'm not giving that to you. Come on over here. Prabhupada's son, Vrindavan, Prabhupada says, was especially rascal. And he wanted to touch a fan. He was watching the fan go around. He wanted to touch. He sticks his finger in an Indian metal fan. It's going to cut that finger right off. But he was always trying to put his finger in the fan. So Prabhupada one time, you know, Prabhupada, was, Prabhupada says one of his friends was there. So Prabhupada unplugged the fan, let it slow down to the point that it wouldn't do any harm, but it was still going around. He told his son, touch the fan. So the son in full happy, tong, made a big sound, scared the hell out of the boy. He never touched, wanted to touch a fan again. So it didn't hurt him, but it got rid of the desire. So Krishna puts it, I don't mean to make a simple of because very heavy things happen in life. But instead of thinking, why did Krishna do this? Why has Krishna done this to me? Okay, fine. Think, why has Krishna done this to me? What is he trying to teach me? What anarta is Krishna trying to get rid of? How is Krishna trying to help me grow in devotional service? Krishna's real. Krishna's there. Krishna's in our heart. Krishna, as he has a plan for the macro, the world, he has a plan for each and every one of us. So instead of becoming angry and raging like Lear on the moor, why has God done this to me? Why, why has God, what am I meant to learn? So the devotees... Just as here, just to make sure the devotees were free from fear, seeing the horrible form of Lord, uh, not horrible, but ferocious form of Lord uh, Varaha. And he glanced over the devotees and gave them reassurance, so much so that they were offering beautiful, sweet prayers. So we should know that Krishna has a plan for this world. It's not all lost. The world is changing. When I used to go out on book distribution, you would hand them a perfection of yoga, especially in the Midwest. They'd say, yogurt. Hell, man, I don't eat yogurt. You have to back up and start over again. There's the old joke. We'll end here, I promise. But I am always do one joke. And I've told this before, but it's a good one. The man is trying to explain. This is what it was like preaching in the 70s. Swavas knows, Archita knows, Tadit knows, anyone who was around and going out in those days. You try to hand out a book. You try to explain the principle of reincarnation. So the joke is, a friend, a man is trying to explain to his dimwit friend 
about reincarnation, transmigration of the soul. And he says, if you live a pious life in this life, in your next life, you're born in a more elevated state. And the dimwit friend says, oh, like Colorado? You follow, you know? That's what it was like. You had to, okay, back up, try again, you know? But now, karma, reincarnation, vegetarian. You meet somebody, vegetarian, oh, I don't eat red meat. Or I'm trying to, they're apologetic. If they have any kind of sensitivity, you know? If in the ecological reason. So my point is, mantra, meditation, you know, guru, all of these concepts are floating out there. And it's because of book distribution. It's because of our festivals and because of our book distribution. It's as simple as that. Worldviews change. What is it? The power of the pen. Marx never even went into Russia. Do you know that? The German writer who established the principles of Marx and Engels. Engels was in England. Marx was in Germany. They never even went into Russia. And their writing completely changed the whole place. For the worse, but it changed it. So we should be... Prabhupada says only devotees are confident. Devotees know who is who and what is what. We know what to do with our life, serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. We know when troubles come, what is Krishna trying to teach me? And we are confident. We are confident on the macro scale that the world will change. Mahaprabhu's mission, as thy will be done, what is it? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The will of Krishna will be done. And we're confident that, all right, Krishna, I'm trying to serve you. Whatever is happening is your mercy. You're calling me towards you. So we can end there. Thank you for sitting so patiently. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.